going to do the confusing Wayne's World cues again? Stop it. <laughs> Are we actually live? Because I don't even know. Okay. <laughs> Hi, everybody. It's always an adventure when you're doing things live in your own home with your husband. Um, so I'm not going to stall for too long just because it doesn't seem to help much. People come and go as they please. But welcome to my tiny kitchen. We are once again back in the very small space that I create all my culinary wonders here. Uh, this is Cooking 101. I'm Jen. I'm a dietitian. I am not a chef. But one of my jobs is to help people understand how to navigate their kitchens and how to make foods that are healthy for them. And the purpose of this show is to help people um, get a better grasp for how to feed themselves especially as we're all cooped up, we're all cooking more, and some people might be cooking for the first time and going, what do I do? Uh, so, here I am. Uh, today, the theme of the show is carbs, what are they good for? And then I had war stuck in my head for like the last week because I came up with this clever title, and it just did not get out of my head. Um, I got a request from a friend who wanted to do low-carb eating. Um, my gut reaction when someone says they want to eat low carb or no carb is to be like, no, don't do that. But I thought this would be a really good teaching moment to kind of take that and show the healthy way of looking at carbs. Um, nowadays, more than ever, carbs get a really bad rep. There is a bunch of diets out there that tell you how to avoid them, tell you that that's why you're fat, tell you that nothing ever works with carbohydrates, but that's not really the case. Um, I just realized I forgot a visual, so follow me. I'm going to go get it. Lola has onions. Lola is the real star of the show here. I know you're all here because of it. But she's in jail because she has too many opinions. And she's very upset about it. Okay. I have my visual. I like visuals. This is my favorite visual. So... For literally all of my life, and all of a lot of people's lives, because this goes back into the 50s, I believe, the food pyramid has been giving people a lot of really, really bad advice. Food pyramid sucks. I personally hate it. A lot of dietitians really don't like the food pyramid. Um, but I particularly think it was an awful creation. Uh, food pyramid was not really the product of any dietitian work. It was the product of the Dairy Council. Uh, the people who lobby in Congress for uh, more money to support milk. Um, they made the base of it grains for some reason. So that's how the American diet has been going for the last 60 years is the biggest part is grains. We love our bread, we love pasta, we love rice. That is what we fill our plate with and then we put the veggies on top and then we put the meat. Um, there's nothing wrong with greens. Greens are great. They serve a purpose. They're full of uh, lots of really valuable energy. Um, they fill the empty places, so if you can't afford to make a uh, high-protein, all-veggie meal, um, they'll help keep you from being hungry. Uh, and when you are an athlete, they are so important because that's the fuel that you use to perform better, longer, faster. Um, but the way the American diet treats grains is not the way we should be treating grains. Um, grains are a really good source of fuel. They pack a big punch when it comes to calories. Calories are fuel, by the way. Um, calories are not that bad thing you have to avoid. Calories are literally the fuel that makes your body go. Uh, if we were a car, calories would be gas. So they're not good or bad. They are essential for existing. Um, wow, our dog really has opinions. Uh, so, um, grains are high calorie, and they, a little bit goes a long way, I always tell my patients. Uh, there is a lot to them. Um, if you have a little spoonful, there's uh, quite a bit that can be added to your meal. So, and I'm shocked how much sometimes it adds. Uh, for pretty much every package I have these days, a quarter of a cup, which is this big, is what they recommend. Um, that's usually about like 160 calories, 150 calories, sometimes 140, but yeah, quarter of a cup. Uh, most packages, they're saying a quarter of a cup dry. So what's good about that is when you cook something that's dry, it expands a little bit. So it'll be a little bigger than a quarter of a cup when it's cooked, but it's still this big. Uh, 
when you're putting it on your plate, if you want to visualize it, this is what I use to visualize how big your carbohydrate serving should be, your grain serving. Ta-da! So, I was talking about how much I hate the food pyramid. This replaced the food pyramid. This is my plate. I love my plate. This is the best thing I think the government has done in a long time when it comes to diet, was we threw out the food pyramid entirely and we got this. Grains are not the base of the plate. Um, my plate kind of runs off of a great method that's kind of predated it called the plate method. Um, it was actually created to help communicate with people who may not speak English as a first language because it's a nice visual and everybody gets this visual. You take your plate, you pretend it's a pie chart, you divide it in half. Half that meal needs to be a plant food. Fruits, veggies, could be both, could be one or the other. I don't really care as long as it's not starchy. What is a starchy veggie? Uh, potatoes, corn, cassava. Um, cassava might be a fruit. I'm actually not entirely sure. Um, yucca, those are all starches. Uh, plantains, uh, or maduros, and platanos, and uh, all that good stuff that we really, really love as a side dish, that does not belong here. So what this is trying to tell everyone is half that meal at least needs to be a non-starchy food. Grains go here. They're still included. You can still have them. They sop up all the juices of the meal and the gravies and the sauces. They're really great for that. But they're not the biggest part. Um, they're the smallest part usually. I know protein is a little smaller here. I kind of encourage people to make this the smallest part just because lots and lots of calories. If you're trying to reduce the calories in your diet, you have to reduce the grains. Um, another really easy way to think about it so you're not constantly measuring your food is if it's the size of your fist. Now you may say, uh, Jen, your fist is really tiny because I have super tiny hands. Um, it's not the size of my fist. You go by your own. So if you are a big person, if your hand is bigger, that's okay. You're still reducing the amount of grains in your diet um, as long as you're following that. People ask me on my plate, I want to measure it out. What does that look like? I say make sure it's a half a cup or less. And the less carbohydrates you put on your plate, the better it is. Now again, I said that a quarter of a cup is a serving size for about 160 calories, which is this, dry. When it's cooked, it expands. So it might actually be a little bit bigger. It might get to about half a cup, which is this. All right, I'm just gonna heat my water up so it's ready to go and we're ready for the cooking portion. Okay, so we got our serving size of grains. We just have to shrink them a little bit. Instead of being the majority of our meals, carbohydrates should be the minority, but they still have a place on the plate. Like I said, they play really important roles. You need them as fuel. Athletes, I might actually tell to eat more carbohydrates than that because that's what they need to be at their best for the next day. Um, there is a big study going around on the keto diet and athletes. It was not well interpreted. Uh, basically what they said was people who don't eat carbs, who are athletes, who then go into that ketosis state are burning more fat than people who are eating carbohydrates. What does that mean exactly? It means that if you don't eat carbs, you don't burn carbs, you burn fat. Is that a good thing for an athlete? Eh. Um, basically, if you're burning a bunch of fat, they found that your performance might not be as good as if you were burning some good old fashioned carbs. Um, people tend to be a little more tired when they're burning fat because fat is not the preferred fuel source of the body. Uh, muscles feed entirely off of blood sugar, which comes from carbohydrates. The brain feeds entirely off of blood sugar, which comes from carbohydrates. Uh, that glucose that's floating around, glucose is a fancy word for sugar, um, in your bloodstream, that's what's feeding everything when you're exercising vigorously. Uh, if you switch to ketones, which is the fat version of giving a carb to your muscles or brain, um, it still works, you won't die, but it's not efficient, and your body's kind of like, what the hell's going on? And also, it's important to note that ketosis is kind of a starvation state for the body, so the body might think it's starving for some reason and be like, oh god, we gotta really protect ourselves here so it's gonna slow down its metabolism, it's gonna store more fat, it's gonna freak out a little bit, uh, and it's gonna not really prefer doing what you're doing to yourself. So, athletes on a keto diet, 
they can still perform, they probably won't perform as well as someone on a carbohydrate diet. And I'm not saying carbo load, everyone should just eat bread all the time. That's not the deal either. Um, usually if you're a professional athlete, there will be a dietitian like me uh, working with you. Um, a lot of professional sports teams have them. I've met some of them. They are fabulous people. Uh, shout out to Nairi and Drexel for showing me all this information because I wouldn't have known it otherwise. But uh, yeah, so dietitians will kind of teach athletes how to eat so they're not just eating diets of pizza and bread because that's not really healthy either. But uh, you do need carbs for fuel. I don't recommend a keto diet. If you are on a keto diet and you're about to fight me about this, I'm not going to argue with you. Uh, you do you. Ultimately, it matters what works for you. But I am here to say that a lot of people are telling others that the keto is the best thing that ever happened to them. And then about six months later, they're exhausted. They don't want to eat it anymore and their weight bounces right back. It's also not a really good forever diet. So I like to tell people, eat your carbs, enjoy them responsibly, just like you would enjoy alcohol um, or desserts, basically. Uh, because that way you can kind of eat that way forever. I want people to eat healthy forever. I don't want people to crash diet and then bounce right back to where they were six months later. So that's kind of my method for why I teach the way I teach. Um, but again, if you're like, no, keto is the answer to everything, I, I'm not going to fight you on that. If you're a big paleo fan, I'm not going to fight you on that either. It's, if it works for you, it works for you, and that's a good thing. I don't want to sabotage anyone. I just want to make things accessible. So if someone else is watching this going, oh, keto is really daunting, oh, paleo is making me really tired, I don't know why, or it's expensive and I can't afford it, um, then this is going to be a relief for you because you can eat your carbs. But I'm going to teach you how to eat them the right way. So we talked about portion size, quarter of your plate, treat your plate like a pie chart. Um, if you need a measurement, one quarter cup dry, up to half a cup cooked. Um, that's the serving size for grains. Now let's talk about what whole grains are, because this is the second thing that super matters. First thing is serving size. Second thing is what type of grains are you putting on your plate? Um, if you only like white rice, that's okay. Follow the serving size. Uh, if you wanna start getting into whole grains, um, you can start mixing it into what you are comfortable with. So you can do like a quarter to a half of the serving as a whole grain and half of it as something you're comfortable with, like white rice, white pasta, things like that. Um, I'm gonna get back to pasta in a sec. But what us dietitians love to recommend is whole grains. So whole grain, right there. Whole grain, this is my Frika. Get your Frika. Um, Gluten-free whole grain. That's quinoa, kasha, whole grain. Whole grain gets thrown around a lot. What does whole grain mean? Uh, whole grain basically means that um, when grains are harvested, what we love to do is process the hell out of them and strip out everything that's good for you in them. That's how you get white flour, which goes into white bread, or most breads, honestly, uh, pasta, um, white rice is not a whole grain. Um, when I say strip out, what I mean is the stuff that makes them look brown and ugly uh, is protein and fiber and vitamins and things that oxidize and don't look pretty. Uh, they take all that good stuff out and they leave a white, pristine thing. And people love the texture of that. They love the image of it. It looks good. It tastes good to them. It is so devoid of all the good stuff that it's just pure carb. Um, why is that a bad thing? It's not necessarily a bad thing. You can eat that stuff. It'll give you fuel. Um, but it is very easy to eat a ton of it. Uh, you can eat white rice in bulk. And it's not going to make you feel really overly full and heavy for hours. Uh, you could burn off eating a big plate of white rice in about an hour and want more and you'll be hungry and you'll want to just get at it. So there's nothing really stopping you from overeating a uh, grain that's been stripped of all that stuff. Now the stuff that is in whole grains, protein and fiber, that stuff is awesome for making you feel full. 
So we encourage whole grains because A, it's really hard to overeat, and B, it's more satisfying. Uh, if you are eating less of a grain, but you still want it to have that filling effect that it can have to fill out your meals, uh, you're getting more bang for your buck, basically. So protein fiber, very, very important. They are always in whole grains because the grain is left whole. They are not adulterated in ways that would take out those things. They're also higher in nutrients. So whole grains have iron. Whole grains have magnesium. They're really good for your brain. They're actually kind of good for your whole body for that reason. Um, whole grains are so high in protein that if you have a picky eater kid who is not eating anything but buttered noodles, but those noodles are whole wheat, they're getting their protein for the day. Uh, that's how big an impact whole grains can have on the diet. So everybody thinks of brown rice. Everybody thinks of whole wheat, uh, whole wheat bread, whole wheat pasta, brown rice. Those are like the trifecta of things that everyone I've ever come to see has said, yeah, I'm eating those things. People don't like the texture or they get really bored eating the same thing over and over again. So I kind of wanted to expand everybody's horizons today with what whole grain options you have. Um, I've got my brown boss money rice. Different types of rice all come as a whole grain because all rice starts out with the fiber and the protein already in it. So I got basmati rice because it's awesome. You can also get whole brown jasmine rice if you want that aromatic rice. It's awesome. Now, the interesting thing about this, rice is actually the lowest in protein of all the whole grains I have in my kitchen. Um, we're going to go into protein. So if you want like the most bang for your buck, the more protein, the fuller you're going to feel, the more these grains will last throughout the day. But if rice is your jam, brown rice, go for it. Quarter of a cup dry, half a cup cooked. Um, I happen to have this and I wanted to pull it out because not a lot of people know about kasha outside of like Eastern Europeans. Um, my mom cooked this stuff all the time in our house, but she mixed it with bow tie pasta. It also, <laughs> it honestly is a great dish. Uh, it's just cooked buckwheat tossed with uh, pasta. Really big fan of it, but not really a healthy dish. But buckwheat, which is, it's not gluten free, but it is wheat. Um, but it is a whole grain and it pops up in like a three-dimensional shape. So it's got a little bite to it It's kind of nice in texture um, It's usually a little bit chewy. You can kind of mix it with anything you want or you can toast it I've actually had uh, a couple salads that I bought from sweet green that toasted up the buckwheat until it was super crunchy And then they sprinkled that on top. So that's still a high protein high fiber grain that you just lightly add to something and gives it a different texture, a little nuttiness. Um, the nice thing about whole grains is they have a lot more flavor than their bland white uh, compatriots. So um, I kind of like that just because it varies up the dish a little bit. Quinoa! This is everybody's favorite high protein grain. Quinoa is pretty great. Um, there's been a little bit of an issue in that when this got really trendy at first, no one was growing it in the States and we kind of took all of it away from South America, who depends on it. But I think we have created a more sustainable environment. Um, yeah, this I think is grown in the U.S. I'm just checking at it, but it's been approved, not stealing from Peru. Quinoa is the most well-known high-protein non-wheat grain. It's great for people on a gluten-free diet. Uh, it's great for people who want a high-protein grain. Um, same rule applies, though, for every other thing. It has <coughs> more protein, but it still has pretty much the same amount of calories as every other grain I looked at. So you're not going to make a giant thing of quinoa. It's not going to be quinoa couscous every night. Uh, you still have to adhere to about a quarter of your plate. Um, again, the high protein thing is great, but it's only good for keeping you full. It still has calories. So just stick with that rule. I also happen to have black quinoa I just wanted to show off. It's another color. Um, not really different health wise, but you, visually, some people just like colors in their food. Uh, quinoa also comes in red. It looks really pretty as a dish, and especially if you're mixing it with all different colored fruits, vegetables, nuts, things like that. So I just wanted to show that off. Today I'm going to be cooking frika. I told you we were going to get our frika on. So, I cannot let go of that pun. You will have to pry it from my cold dead hands. 
Um, Frika is wheat. So, not great for gluten free, sorry guys. Um, but it is a whole grain. This is cracked Frika, which means they took the whole grain and then they cracked it. It's still a whole grain. Um, every component is still there. What is Frika? Uh, big staple dish in uh, Middle East Arabic countries. Uh, they harvest wheat young. Um, and then they kind of set fire to it, but because it's young and green, it's got a high water content. So the fire does double duty by burning off the chaff, but then roasting the green young uh, wheat grains and then uh, making a very unique kind of nutty fire roasted uh, flavor and texture. Um, Frika is just basically the same as any other green in that you can cook it up real fast and then add it to a salad. It cooks super fast. Uh, I've already got my water boiled, so while I'm continuing to talk, I'm going to throw in what I was going to put in. So, I'm just following the directions on the packet. It was one cup to two and a half cups of water. I'm going to do a half cup to one and a quarter cups of water. And just add it into the boiling water. Give it a little stir so everything is submerged. And then you're literally just going to cook for 15 minutes. It goes by really quickly. I may be done with this video before this is done, but don't worry, I have other things to show you. So you let that cook. Um, there's one thing I didn't mention, couscous. Couscous is not a whole grain. Please do not treat it like a whole grain. Uh, if you love couscous, that's awesome. Please measure it out in an appropriate amount, no more than quarter cup. Uh, uncooked. Um, couscous is basically, the, it's, this, it's almost the same method as pasta to be made. They take a durum flour, which is a little bit higher in fiber, um, but it's still flour, and they roll it into pellets and then like grate it into those really fine little couscous bits. Uh, but it's basically the same uh, makeup as pasta, so I don't include it in my whole grain talk. Um, people love it. It's different. It's new. Well, it's not new, but it's different. Uh, something to break up the rice every now and then, but still higher in calorie without the benefit of high fiber, high protein. Um, just marginally higher fiber. Uh, durum flour is also used to make certain pastas, but, uh, I, I don't recommend pasta in general. Uh, here's my pasta talk. So it's really hard to do a quarter of your plate as pasta. People do not like doing that because it's very unsatisfying. Um, people also ask me, how the hell are Italians so skinny? Uh, they don't eat giant plates of pasta like we do. They actually have pasta as like a little appetizer dish or like a course in a mini course meal that they eat over time and it's just not the same as it is here. We love our big bowls of pasta. And why not? They're delicious. But they're not good for us on a calorie perspective. They're not gonna keep us full unless we're eating tons of whole grain pasta, which is very heavy when you eat a whole bowl of that. Um, people don't like the texture of it. So when people ask me what do I do with pasta, I say save it for a cheat day. Make your cheat day once a week, the same day every week, so you're not doubling up on your cheat days or eating a cheat day every couple of days. Uh, or just don't eat it at all. I, I save pasta for special occasions. It was just our anniversary um on tuesday and i had my husband make my favorite dish ever which is spaghetti carbonara and that's my pasta for basically the next month or two um if you get it out of your system you don't really miss it and it's such a high high calorie dish that it really should be a special occasion thing if you are dying for pasta and you just have to have it uh you still gotta follow the rule quarter of the plate still got to stay there, even if it's ravioli, even if it's tortellini, if it's something stuffed, it doesn't matter, uh, especially if it's lasagna. Make it the smallest part of your meal. Always make sure you have half that meal as veggies. I have people who are like, I really want to indulge, so I say, okay, you're going to have a side salad. You're going to eat that first. Then you're going to have your pasta. And they get very sad about it, but then it, ha it helps. It reduces the calorie load that you're eating, and that's what it takes to eat healthy. Um, I just wanted to show off, everybody's making bread right now. Um, I made my bread the, yesterday. Uh, this is actually a completely whole grain bread. That does not mean that I can eat the whole thing. I still have to abide by the same rules that I just told you, which is 
quarter of your meal is bread. Um, with something like this, I try to make it once a day, if that. Uh, but this is an Irish soda bread, um, traditionally made with all whole wheat flour. I ran out of whole wheat flour. So I substituted a little oat flour. Oats are also a whole grain. Um, oatmeal, by the way, fabulous whole grain. Uh, not so much if you do the microwavable packets with the sugar mixed in, not good for you, but regular rolled oats, which are all on top of this, so you know what I'm talking about. Uh, they are completely whole grain, high fiber. They, uh, if, they've done studies where people who had high cholesterol, if they ate oatmeal once a day for like a month, their cholesterol dropped. Fiber is so good for lowering your cholesterol. So this is a whole grain thing, but again, it's not going to be my whole meal. I'm not going to sit there eating chunks off the bread, even though I really, really want to because it goes really well with butter and cheese and all the things that I love. Um, you got to abide. So what I would say is if you're making your own bread at home right now, try to use whole grain flours like whole wheat, uh, oat flour, which is what I used. Um, there are a couple other you can shop around if you find them in your grocery store. Uh, go, if your grocery store has a Bob's Red Mill section, go find that because that is whole grain central for different exotic flowers that you can't find anywhere else. Um, and then just abide by the portioning rule that I went over. So, um, the Frika in five minutes has already cooked up a little too much. So I'm going to lower the heat a little bit and I'm going to add a little bit more water because I don't want to have a mess on my hands. This is something that can definitely happen when you are rehydrating grains. So I'm just going to add a little bit more water, lower the heat, recap, let that chill out for a bit. Okay, so to the cooking portion of the show. We got our grains going. What do you do with this? So I'm going to take this and I'm going to mix it with a bunch of greens to make a grain and green salad. Say that three times fast. And then I'm going to show you guys how to make your own dressing because making your own dressings is awesome. Uh, dressings that you buy at the store are so high in calories. That's a huge uh, hidden calorie thing. So we're going to make this kind of a two-parter about grains and then about making your own dressings. It's not hard to make dressings at home, but you got to know what you're playing with. Um, usually some of the best have a little bit of oil, a little bit of acid, and some other things to flavor it. Uh, we talked about acids a couple of uh, episodes ago. Um, one of the most common ones, lemons, citrus, limes, all that good stuff. You can even do grapefruit, oranges, things like that. You can also use uh, vinegars, vinaigrettes, that's an acid. Um, the one I'm making today is going to be a Greek yogurt, garlic, and lemon juice and olive oil dressing. Very, very, very simple. Very, very, very easy. So I started with the Greek yogurt. Uh, I got 2%. Why did I get 2%? That's a weird in the middle number. So full fat Greek yogurt is great. It's high in protein. It's really high in calories because of the fat. 0% uh, Greek yogurt, which is also readily available, is great. It is fat free. But when you take fat out of things, it tastes terrible. So what food companies have learned to do is replace it entirely with salt. So 0% is great if you're eating tons of salt and you don't mind that if you are avoiding that, not the best choice. And full fat, very high calorie, not the best choice either. So I go and I split the difference. I also don't use the entire thing. Um, I try to be as health conscious as possible. It's a fine line when you're dealing with something that goes from fat to salt. Uh, I'm gonna use probably uh, half this container. Also, I encourage people who are eating vegan or avoiding dairy, uh, check out vegan alternatives to Greek yogurt. They are, they are out there. This can be done. But if you cannot find that, um, Just Mayo, which is absolutely my favorite thing in the world, it is a vegan mayonnaise, can be substituted. Uh, it's made with pea protein, there's no soy in it, um, and it will give that creaminess. If that kind of grosses you out to use a vegan mayo, you can also, for a creamy texture, uh, use mustard. Mustard is an awesome, awesome creamy salad dressing addition. 
uh, you can actually make this entire salad dressing with mustard instead of yogurt. Okay, next thing I'm going to add is garlic. I'm going to crush the garlic like I've showed you several times now. Crushing garlic is the easiest way to get the paper off. So for this, it asks you to have a very, very, very minced garlic. Um, it is a pain in the neck to sit there and mince garlic, and it'll take a while. I have a garlic press. If you have a garlic press, I recommend it. Um, you can probably find them on Amazon. I don't think there's something that would be sold out, but who knows, because everything's sold out these days. Um, this is not mandatory. Uh, you can just chop up the garlic. Don't try to squish the garlic yourself, you'll make a mess. But this is what a garlic press looks like. Uh, this might be an antique, I honestly can't say. This is one of these things that my mom gave me, and it could just look like an antique, or it could be like 60 years old. It's entirely possible. So. This is not what all garlic presses look like now. They're usually silicone based or plastic. Um, I just happen to have super old metallic one. So I'm just gonna squish the garlic. I'm not the biggest fan of garlic presses because it, they're not that efficient. A lot of it comes out the top that's not supposed to, but it gets enough of the garlic and the oils in that I'm not gonna worry about it. See, it's coming out on every side right now. Ugh. It's also a good exercise for your hands. Getting a workout. So a lot of it comes out the top. Enough of it comes out that what you what you're doing is getting like a really good production of garlic oils that are activated while you're squishing everything down like this. So I pull it out. I'm gonna just kind of feed everything back in that came out and press it one more time. And then I'm not gonna worry about it because it makes a huge mess. Alright. That's enough garlic. I mean, it's never enough garlic, but that's enough garlic for today. Okay. Third ingredient is the dog that I'm going to feed to everyone right now because she is a menace. All right, lemon juice. I love my lemon squeezer. So, like I said before, acids are great for flavor enhancement. They bring out the flavor like nothing else besides salt. So I'm going to add a generous amount of lemon juice to this mixture. And it's going to be awesome. So I just like to flip my lemon half over and squish it again just to make sure I'm getting every last drop out of this nice ripe lemon. Okay, now I'm going to do one full lemon's worth for this. I'm using a pretty small mason jar here. Oh, note on mason jars. You don't have to have them. I happen to have them because I occasionally make things like jam and can them. Uh, this is not a thing that is mandatory. Uh, you can do this with pretty much any container that you feel safe shaking once the cap is on. As long as you can shape it, shake it without making a mess, go for it. Doesn't matter what you're putting this salad dressing into. dog is going to break the door down and storm us. Okay, we've got our lemon juice, and I'm going to cap it off with some olive oil. You can also put some other awesome things in here. Uh, shallots go really well in salad dressing like this. Okay, I'm going to give this a light stir just to combine a little bit. Make sure that the Greek yogurt is not stuck to the bottom here. screw the cap on. I'm going to make sure I screw it on correctly and not incorrectly like I've done in the past so that when I shake it everything goes all over me. But if that happens you guys have definitely gotten the most for your money in this show. Okay, make sure the cap is super secure. If you are using something like a Tupperware container, hold it like this so that nothing goes anywhere. And then you just shake this to death. Yes, that's going to be an awesome visual that I just did there. This is like shake weight level advertising. Really good for your arms too, but it incorporates really fast. So I've got a Greek yogurt dressing ready to go. You can put fresh herbs in this if you want. That's also a really good thing to do with this stuff. 
How's my freak doing? It's doing pretty well. I only put half a cup in here and it is enormous. There's at least a full cup of Frika in there now. Let's see. All right. Now I picked it correctly. I just really wanted to get done fast. Um, so when you put your Frika in there, always reduce the heat because otherwise the water is going to boil all away and then you have some burnt Frika. You don't want to do that. But it cooks up pretty much the same as rice, just much faster. So we got, well, we got a minute left. So I can probably just dig this out right now. So I got my grain, my greens, my greens for my grains. Putting that down. My greens for my greens. And I'm going to add them in. Doot, doot, doot. And then I'm going to toss everything just so it's combined. And I could probably have added many, many more greens. I could have also waited until this cooled down a bit because now it's kind of cooking the lettuce a little bit, but that's okay. Just for show, we're going to have some wilted greens and cooked greens. And then just kind of lift it out on my plates. Alright. So, that's a lot. Now keep in mind, I put half a cup in to cook. And that is twice the amount of the serving size I recommended. But this is just for show right now. Um, I've actually got quite a bit still in there. So you can see how much this stuff expands. Half a cup, definitely more than your ever serving size. Um, this is probably a mountain because this is a small plate to like a half, maybe three quarters of a cup. Maybe not. The, the greens are kind of bulking it out too. Um, once that's done, I'm just going to add a little of my lemon garlic dressing to it. That's a visual right there, but it's really good. And you can add whatever chopped vegetables you want to it. It's a really good combination. It tastes really good. The greens really bulk out the salad part, so you're not just eating a salad and feeling really unsatisfied. And because it's a whole grain, it's got high protein, high fiber, gonna keep you full for a really long time. So that's my spiel on greens, guys. Uh, I hope that was helpful. Um, you don't have to eat low carb if you don't want to. If you do want to, then go for it. You know, I'm not going to stop you. If it works for you, it works for you. But you can have your carbs and lose weight too. That's kind of the take-home message I wanted to send. So thanks for tuning in again. And uh, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. I'm here. I'm happy to answer them. Uh, if you are able to and would like to contribute to this show in some way, uh, you can always donate to my Venmo, which is at JSRockRD. Um, I am grateful for any contributions, but if you can't afford it, I like to keep this show free. Um, it's just for people who might be out of a job or stuck at home uh, or just don't know what to do at home to cook, and I want to make that accessible. Um, if you do contribute, the money literally goes to me buying the groceries to do these shows. That's it. So thanks for tuning in, and I hope to see you next week, and enjoy the rest of your weekend, guys.